Go. Exercise one. All right, we have 30 seconds breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth. In through the nose for about five seconds, out through the mouth. Rest. Good job, guys. Now we're going to go to our side. Lay on our side. And we're going to do a bretzel. So start with your feet over top of each other and then bring the top foot in front of you and grab the underneath foot. Go ahead and begin. Remember, grab that top knee. That top one comes towards your chest. And then you're going to grab the underneath foot. And you're going to try to rock that shoulder back and forth nice and slow. All right, guys, we're going to rotate to the other side. Remember that top leg uh, over top and then grabbing underneath three, foot. That's the one we're grabbing two, the underneath foot. One. Exercise three. Begin. All right, guys, go ahead and stand tall for me. And we're just going to do toe touches. So on toe touch, we're going to drive our hips back just a little bit. We're going to go down and touch the ground nice and slow. We're we'll trying not to bounce out of it. Go ahead and begin. Nice and slow, come up, squeeze our hips, and then go down slow again. Okay, stand tall each time. Try to get that full extension to force that hamstring to get long. And then go back down and make that hamstring as long as possible on the bottom side. Going down and up. Try not to bounce at the bottom. Try to be under control. We're trying to create hamstring length, not force hamstring length. Three, two, one. Rest. Rest. Next, we're going to go push up position. We're going to do Spider Man with rotation. So we're going to step one foot all the way up. Three, with that foot two, we step up, we're going to rotate that two, arm five. towards that side. Go ahead and begin. Step one foot up. And then rotate the arm of that leg that's up. And that one's going to go to the sky. Look high. Follow that hand all the way up. Bring it back down. Job. Ten more seconds. Three, two, one. Rest. Rest. Let's go ahead and stand tall. We're going to do Frankenstein. So Frankenstein is just going to kick one leg out at a time Three, under control. Two, Try not to over kick. Exercise. Go ahead and begin. So we want under control. We're trying to create hamstring length under control. But try not to do a big sumo, uh, uh, a hard kick on that one. We just want to make it our hamstring doing the kicking, not our quad. Rest good. Next, we're just going to do a body weight squat. Tall chest, sitting nice and deep, eyes up. That way you're sitting down nice and low, Three, under control. Two, we're just working on some body weight squats. Exercise Begin. Seven. I really want you to work on getting more and more depth as the round goes on. It's okay to go slow, concentrating on getting as low as possible. Keep the abs tight. That way that spine braces. Give you a little bit more depth. Three, two, one. Rest. Rest. Good job, guys. The last thing we have is a lateral hop. So on a lateral hop, two feet together, and you're just going to jump side to side. Or you can do a two-step shuffle. Two. One, two, one. one. One, two, one. Exercise eight. Okay, go ahead and begin on that. Remember, a lateral hop, side to side, feet coming back. Nice, even pace. Or two-step shuffle, one, two, one. One, two, one. One, two, one. Three, two, 
And rest, guys. Go ahead and grab yourselves a quick drink. We do have two circuits today. We have one is an AMRAP and one is a circuit-based one. So we'll go through the AMRAP first. The tools you're going to need for an, this one will be a band to do like a band RDL or a kettlebell to do a kettlebell RDL or dumbbells to do a dumbbell RDL, okay? So some type of variation that you can have a weight when you're driving your hips back and snapping your hips up. We also are doing overhead squats. If you were here last week, all we're going to do is we're going to use a band or a stick overhead to, to make that overhead position. Um, we could lightly weight it, but I'd rather just go with a stick or a band for most people. Also, another thing to do is to elevate your heels. And so what that does is you can put your heels on something that makes it a little bit easier for you to sit deep into, okay? Um, we'll kind of explain that one as it goes. All right, so our first one, first circuit is a 15-minute AMRAP. So I'm going to hit a 15-minute timer, and you're going to go through this circuit as many rounds as you possibly can inside of 15 minutes. So the first exercise is going to be five reps, and we're going to do diamond push-ups. So on diamond push-ups, you're trying to make a diamond position with your hands. Elbows are need to hug the body as tight as possible. That's the key on this. Elbows hug the body. That's a full diamond push-up there where he's working on his triceps. He's going to do five of those. From there, we can go to a knee position. Same thing. Up and down. I do find for a lot of people, if they bring their hands out a little, little bit closer to their shoulders, but keep their elbows tight to their body, it gives them a little bit more strength because the diamond position takes that out a little bit. So you can use that position as well as a modification as a hands out. So we're working on triceps there, okay, guys? We have five of those. From there, you have 10 sit-ups. Okay, so sit-up position or normal sit-up position, as tight, tall chest coming all the way up, all the way down. You can also put your feet into a wall if you struggle with doing 10 in a row. From there, we can do a hands and knee crunch as well. So hands and knee crunch, you're laying down, chest up, back down. All right, so we have five of the diamond push-ups, 10 of the sit-ups, and then we'll be standing tall. So it's going to go 5, 10, 15, 20 today. We'll do 15 RDLs. So if you have a band, you're going to double the band up and stand on top of it. You're going to have your hands looped in, stand tall. From there, Nathan's going to drive his butt back as far as possible, snap his hips up. Drive his butt back as far as possible, snap his hips up. The keys is keeping that Superman chest. He never lets it round. Instead of those, if you have a kettlebell, you can put a kettlebell between your legs and do like a kettlebell RDL like we do in the gym. Again, 15 of each of those. Or if you have dumbbells and you don't have a kettlebell or anything of that nature, drive it back and forth. If you have none of those things, you can always do what's called a stick RDL or a hand RDL where you just have your stick out and you're just gonna do the same thing in RDL, driving our hips back up and down, okay? Again, that can be done if you just pretend you have a stick in your hand too or use your band too. From there, we're gonna go to overhead squats. So this one takes a little bit of extra mobility. So we're gonna show the harder progression and go from there. The hardest progression is taking the stick overhead. He's gonna make sure that his, his hands are right above his ears. He's gonna sit into his heels, all the way down and up. So this takes a lot of mobility, not only in the hips, but in the shoulders too. So that's variation number one. You can also use a band above your head just like that to, to use the thing, same thing. Main thing with the band is try not to pull with too much tension against it. So from there, a modification is actually putting your heels up on something. Um, so let's pretend Nathan has like a little, uh, got anything, Nate? Yeah. He's got dumbbells he's going to put his, his heels up on. What that does, it creates extra mobility allows him to go deeper, but still keep those hands. So if you have anything that's solid that you could put up, it only needs to be like a half an inch to an inch. It doesn't have to be huge for you to put your heels up onto. Otherwise, if you just are trying to go down and you just can't go down at all, get rid of anything overhead and just go into a regular squat. We can just go to a body weight squat or you can do a light weighted squat as well. And we're just squatting in front of us just like we did in the warm up. So, or you can do a wall sit if you can't do any squatting either. So you can go from a regular squat to a wall sit. On a wall sit, we have to do 20 though. So you're going to use a hand. Uh, Nate, you want to show on the wall sit uh, how to use your hands as a count. So if you're in a wall sit counting, it's one, two, three, up to 20 on that, okay? So remember, we'll do five diamond push-ups, 10 sit-ups, 15 RDLs, 20 variations of either an overhead squat or a regular squat. If you have a slam ball too, you can always do a slam ball instead of those, but that's going to be pretty hard. Um, you have 15 total minutes. Go ahead and grab yourself some water bottle, a water bottle, kick your music up to whatever level you would like it to be. 
I'm gonna try to yell as loud as possible so you can have that music nice and loud. We will be starting off in that push-up position. So if you wanna go ahead and get in ready for that push-up position, I'll know you're ready to go. I'm gonna to try to get started in 10 seconds. All right, it looks like everybody's ready to go. Here we go. 15 minutes, five diamond push-ups. Three, two, one, begin. Exercise one. Okay, guys, moving at your own pace. We'll have five diamond push-ups. Remember, we can do it on the knees. You can take your hands a little bit wider if you're having trouble doing that, or you don't just go as deep. From there, you have 10 sit-ups or hands and knee crunches. 10 sit-ups or hands and knee crunches. Try to control with the core, not too much rocking, okay? I'd rather it be a little bit slow. From five push-ups, 10 sit-ups, then we're gonna stand tall to 15 RDLs. 10 sit-ups or hands and knee crunches, 15 RDLs. Remember we can use a band, dumbbells, kettlebell, pretty much anything, a stick. The main thing we're looking for on the RDL is driving those hips as far backwards, get the hamstrings really engaged and snap our hip through. 15 of these. These first three exercises are gonna be pretty normal for you guys. It's getting into exercise number four. That's gonna be a little out of the norm. So after 15 RDLs, you're gonna be doing 20 overhead squats or body weight squats, okay? Driving those hips back, snap through. I don't want you to rush any exercise. We have 15 minutes. I want you to do the best you can, okay? Overhead squats, try to keep the hands a little bit wider. The wider the hands are, it gives you just a little bit more shoulder mobility. Remember, if you're doing the wall sit, control your hands up, 20 total on that. Not bad, guys. Pretty good. I know it's a little bit harder to make that depth position, um, but do your best to get what you can. Also, if you have to find a way to elevate with a uh, small weights underneath your heels or something that works too. Abs tight, really concentrate on the abs. So after you're done with 20 of those overhead squats, we're going back in, starting right back in round two with five diamond push-ups. Please grab yourself a drink in between rounds if you want, in between exercises, whenever you need it. After 20 overhead squats or 20 body weight squats or wall sits. Just make sure you're counting to 20. And then you're back into those five diamond push-ups, guys. Five diamond push-ups. Try to the main thing I think on diamond push-ups is elbows tight to the body. After that, you have 10 sit-ups or hands and knee crunches. The tighter your elbows can stay to the body, the more tricep it will be. And we're looking for it to be a tricep exercise. Okay, tight to the body. Then 10 sit-ups or hands and knee crunches. Those 20 overhead squats are gonna take a little bit more time today, guys. That's okay, we're worried about that depth. After the overhead squats, you are on to tricep, or uh, sorry, diamond push-ups. Good job, overhead squats look great today, guys, really good. After the 10 sit-ups, if you're on those, you're going to 15 RDLs, driving those hips all the way back, snap your hips through, good. Really concentrate on getting, keeping those shoulder blades engaged, which means we don't wanna round our shoulders. If you find you can't go down as low because you start to round your shoulders, just stop right there and then come back up. Five diamond push-ups, 10 sit-ups, 15 RDLs, and then we're back into 20 overhead squats. Good. RDL position is looking really good. You guys are doing a great job of driving that butt back. We're having no issues with that today. Overhead squats are really good depth. I know last week we had to need a little bit more practice, but it looks like we're getting better and better at those. Don't worry about speed too much on that overhead squat. Worry about controlled depth and not bouncing out of the bottom. You want to control out of the bottom. 
after 20, so you have five diamond push-ups, 10 sit-ups, 15 RDLs, 20 overhead squats. I'll try to repeat that as much as possible because everybody's kind of in different stations as we go. We have 10 minutes to go, guys. 10 minutes to go. After 10 sit-ups, you have 15 RDLs. On the sit-ups, if you start to really um, run out the ability to come up with a tall chest, don't be afraid to take those toes and dig them underneath a couch or into a wall. Just make sure if you're putting your toes under something that it doesn't, it's not able to lift up. Then you have 15 RDLs after those sit-ups and 20 overhead squats. The one we did find last week that people kind of burnt out a little bit on was the diamond push-ups. So just make sure on the diamond push-ups that if you've been doing full, don't be afraid to go to your knees. If you've been going to your knees, just try to go down as far as you can control and come back out. If you can't go all the way down as you start to wear down, that's okay but be slow and controlled and drive through those hands so that triceps are forced to engage. We're really thinking about the tricep, the muscle right behind the arms. We're not really worried about the chest at all in that. Not that the chest, you won't feel it in the chest, but we're really trying to feel the tricep. Five push-ups, 10 sit-ups, 15 RDLs, 20 squats. Good work, everybody. Everybody's on different spots, but the technique's looking good at each one. I don't see any issues right now. Shannon, try to keep those elbows even tighter to your body if possible. Yep, there you go. Really force that arm to work in that. Good. Mary, take your shoulder blades when you go down and squeeze them a little bit tighter for me. Your shoulder blades, there you go. Yep, that pull that chest taller. That way there's that mid back stays strong. All right, guys, we are past that halfway point. I have seven minutes left out of 15 total minutes we're going. You guys are doing great. Remember, we have five push-ups, 10 sit-ups, 15 RDLs, 20 overhead squats. I have no idea how many rounds you're going to be able to get in. I mean, if you got 15 minute rounds in, that would be incredible. I don't think that's going to happen, but it might. I never know. I'm not really sure how fast everybody's moving. But if you can get somewhere between six to seven rounds, you're really moving at a good pace, especially with those overhead squats. They take a long time. Make sure any of you guys that are using, um, or any variation of the RDL, if you're using anything that's weighted based and is coming in front of you, make sure you keep it come, your hands coming towards your ankles, okay? You don't wanna get those out too far in front of you. So your hands are aiming down towards your ankles so that the pressure stays right in the glute area, less in the lower back. If you have a band, the band's gonna naturally put your hands in that position, but the sticks and the dumbbells and kettlebells can get out of place a little bit.
Amy Nagel, when you take that hand above your head, engage that whole arm, lock that thumb out, and make it long when you come up, okay? Long. There you go. Yep. Instead of just sticking those hands over, really engage the shoulder blades and try to force the, the shoulder blade to work too. Got five minutes left. Two thirds of the workout done. Five push ups, 10 sit ups, 15 RDLs, 20 overhead squats. If your shoulders are getting unbelievably smoked from the overhead squats, don't be afraid to go to a round of maybe body weight squats and then come back to overhead squats again. I know sometimes the, the shoulders can get a little worn down because of the push ups. But try to get back to those overhead squats again if you do take a round off of them. RDLs are looking great. I really want you to think about everybody, those sh shoulder blades on that are pulled back and almost squeezed together. That way that mid back is engaged as you drive those hips back and you don't have any rounding in that upper body. That might reduce the amount you can bend over, but that's okay because we're trying to keep that back solid. 15 RDLs, 20 overhead squats. Sit-ups might start to get to be a tough point, right? At getting pretty close to that point. So on the sit-ups, don't be afraid to dig your feet into something if you're really having trouble where you're trying to almost rock out of that bottom position. Dig your feet into something. A wall is great because a wall just creates a little stability. You just put your feet against the wall and it creates a little stability for you. It would be better to go from a, a sit-up to a wall sit-up than it would be go from a sit-up to a hands and knee crunch because those are pretty large variations. If you like butterfly sit-ups, those are okay too. Just make sure you don't do too much rocking with that butterfly sit-up. Great depth, Mary Bowers. Those squats look awesome. Good work. Good job, Kate. You guys are doing great. Technique looks awesome this morning. Lots of good effort. Sometimes these AMRAPs are tough because you just mentally have to keep yourself going. Just going round after round. It's like, man, I don't know how many rounds I want to do. Just keep moving. We have three minutes, exactly three minutes left. So we have most of this workout done. Today's finisher is really quick. It's only a three minute finisher. So it goes by pretty fast. And it looks like it's all core based. So sit-ups might affect it. Otherwise, the other ones really don't have a lot to do with it. So, which is nice. I don't even think the sit-ups are that bad for today's because we don't really hit that pattern. Good work. Tall chest on those sit-ups coming up. Nice, strong shoulders. Elbows tight on those diamond push-ups. Keep them tight. Really get the... You should think about when you're doing those diamond push-ups, do I feel those in the muscle behind my arm? That's a tricep. Do I feel it in the tricep? If I don't feel it in the tricep, I need to pull those elbows tighter and really think about driving through my hands and feel it in that tricep muscle. I like to slow that movement down a little bit because sometimes if I go too fast, I don't really get it in the tricep. Last two minutes, five push-ups, 10 sit-ups, 15 RDLs, 20 overhead squats. Overhead squats, depth is the key. If you're losing that depth, take those hands from overhead, excuse me, take those hands from overhead, put them in front of you if you feel like you're not getting the depth you were getting before. I'd rather you bring them out in front of you and keep that squat depth. We are on that final minute, guys, officially last minute. Do what you can inside of this minute. Please try not to stop. Just try to keep going. Do what you can in this final minute. We'll have a nice little break as Nathan uh, demonstrates the next circuit. So you can grab your drinks and stuff after this minute. Just try to push and finish up as much as you can inside of this minute. If you can get on this one, you might be able to get both the diamonds and the sit-ups together because those go pretty quick. Overhead squats might take the full minute if you're working on those. RDLs take a little bit too. Don't sacrifice technique for speed though. Never do that.
20 seconds. Just keep moving. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, and done, guys. Great job. You're not going to need any of the tools you have, so if they're in your way, you can go ahead and put them off to the side. Grab yourselves a quick drink. Turn your music down just a little bit if you're having trouble hearing me, because we're going to be demonstrating another circuit here. All right, guys, our second circuit today, again, is like I said, is just core. So what we're going to do for core today, we have 30 seconds of one exercise and 30 seconds of another exercise. So we have two exercises we're going to do, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. But there is no rest in between each one. So what we're going to do is we're going to do 30 seconds of one right into 30 seconds of the other, back into 30 seconds of that one, 30 seconds back and forth. We're going to do three rounds, three straight minutes of work, but they're completely opposite core groups, so they really don't negatively impact each other. That's why we can go back to back. So variation number one, we have three versions to it. So version number one is a boat pose. So a boat pose means we're just going to hold that position. You can also do your knees tucked if you can't take those legs straight. Either one's fine. We don't need to go side to side Russian twist style. We just need to hold that position, keep that core tight. All right. From there, we could do a hollow hold. If you are somebody that can stay long, you just want to hold that hollow hold position. If holding is hard for you, then you can always turn it into a dead bug or a half dead bug in and out, right? So if you can't do the hold, the hold's ideal, one of those hold positions, because we're trying to be isometric. But if you can't, you can always go into a moving position, which is a little bit easier on the back. From there, we're going to go to a lateral hand walk, okay? So lateral hand walk is a push-up position, and we're just going to walk one or two steps left, one or two steps right. See how his feet and hands are moving? If you watch his hands exactly, when he comes in the middle, his hands will come together as his feet go apart. His hands will come together as his feet go apart, feet together as his hands go apart. That makes a huge difference in stability. But if you can't do that, normal plank on our hands or plank on our elbows is fine as well. 30 seconds. So Nathan's quick transitioning there. So he's going to go one to the other. So if you need to move things around so you can trick quick transition, awesome. Don't wait for anything. Once I say switch, I want you to switch as soon as possible into that next exercise and go. Don't wait for me to say go because it's already going. All right, go, go ahead and crank your music back up if you turned it down on me. Grab yourselves a quick drink if you don't have, if you, if you need one. We're going to try to get started in about eight seconds once I see everybody's in a position to go. We have three total minutes. We're going to be starting off with a boat pose, hollow hold, or dead bug. Don't be afraid to move between the three of those if one doesn't work out. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started in three seconds. Boat pose, two seconds. One second, here we go, 30 seconds, begin. Exercise one. Awesome work. I want you to think about, memory. knees can stay tucked if you can't keep them long. Keep those knees more tucked like a jackknife position, holding that. That makes the lever arm a little bit shorter. If that gets too rough, go to that hollow hold position where you're laying with your back flat, arms and legs off the ground. Or you can always do dead bugs. 10 more seconds. Remember after this, you're gonna go straight into those lateral walks or planks, so roll over quickly right into it. Two, one. one, lateral hand walk or planks. Go right there. Right. As soon as you get to it, start going. If you're planking, just hang out there. If you're lateral walking, start moving. Really think about your hips. We don't want the hips moving way too high or low. Try to keep them even when we call them flat, flat hips. It doesn't have to be a lot of steps, guys. You don't have to cover a lot of ground. It can just be one or two and then one or two back, one or two, one or two back. We have five more seconds. We're going to go straight back in that po boat pose. All right, back to your butt, but boat pose or hollow holds. Go, right then, right then. We're into round two. We only have three rounds of this. Round two, we only have three rounds. Whenever I'm in an isometric position like this, I really want to think about my breathing. In through the nose, out through the mouth. The longer breath I can take, if I can take a five second in, five second out, that gives me a 10 second count to know how long it is. So just breathe in, out. Three seconds, we're going back in those lateral holds. Begin, lateral walks, go! Or planks, either one is fine. A plank position is hard too if you gotta hold it, if you feel like you're getting your butt too high. Or those shoulders really wear down, just hang out there. Nice and slow and controlled. 
I like to take my, take my feet pretty wide on this one, guys. It gives me a little bit more stability, so you can take a wide step. Five more seconds, and we'll be starting the last round. Back to our butts. Boat pose, go! Last round of these. Last round. Hollow holds if you have to move over to hollow holds. If you're really, really feeling it in your lower back, a hollow hold position is going to help out a lot for you. If you're just feeling it in like the tailbone, then hanging out there is not too bad. Five seconds. We'll be starting our last lateral walk. Roll over. Let's go. Last one. Last one. Here we go. Lateral walks or planks. Finish strong. Try to keep moving the whole time. 20 seconds. These are my nemesis. These, are, these ones are tough for me, so I know how a lot of you guys are feeling. 10 more seconds. My shoulders get smoked way easier than my abs. And your workout is complete.